Hello, my name is Russell Myers. Welcome to Issues Unite. All right, so I, I've really got, I, I try not to include, uh, you know, uh, bash one party over another uh, too much, but in this case, I actually have to. The number of states that are ending supplemental unemployment uh, assistance has increased from 18 states to 24. And that includes uh, reducing the pandemic unemployment assistance, which assists gig workers, which number in the millions who have seen a drop of in their employment, their income over the past year, including up to today. So, at this point, the supplemental unemployment assistance is set to end between June 12th and July 9th in 24 states. So, beginning in 11 days from the time that I am recording this, millions of people are going to see an end to their supplemental employment assistance. What does this mean? Well, first, the first thing that you're going to see is a cliff, an absolute drop in a consumer spending. Now, they're doing this right in the same time frame where the uh, eviction moratorium ends. So even people that uh, that have an income or by any means, if they're behind on their rent, well, they're going to stop spending anywhere else because they're going to be preparing for what comes next. Now, of course, the Democrat-led um, Congress may extend the moratorium, but what good does that do still? Uh, that I pointed out many times that that does nothing but kick the can down the road. The debts keep on building up. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, I need to use my sinus spray. Uh, <laughs> all right. So they're still going to reduce their spending because they know at some point these debts are going to come due. It has been notoriously difficult for the people who actually need the assistance to obtain that assistance. Maybe the landlord doesn't participate in this government program or it's just too onerous for them to access this because the, uh, the impetus is placed on the people that need the assistance to prove that they have lost income, which can be require so much documentation that it becomes nearly impossible. And even at that point, how much assistance are they going to get is highly questionable. So let's just, but let's just look at just the effect that this is going to have uh, to end the uh, supplemental unemployment. Well, you see the cliff that I mentioned of uh, consumer spending. And this is all, and this is happening uh, as prices are increasing. So the true effects are go uh, going to be very difficult to um, ascertain and calculate, uh, more difficult because you have to measure, uh, you know, volume of consumer products being sold rather than the way it is normally expressed in dollar amounts. But even with the increased pricing, we're going to see a massive drop 
in 24 states, almost half of the country. Yeah. So consumer spending drops from there. You've got less need for employees. So companies start uh, cutting hours, cutting wages, stop hiring, and start laying people off which leads to further cuts in consumer spending. You cut consumer spending, what else do you cut? You also cut tax revenue. Now, some of these states are offering incentives for workers to take a job. Well, this is not being funded by the federal government. This is being funded at the state level. So they're refusing money coming in from the federal government and running up more debt, which means they are literally subsidizing corporate uh, people working for corporations, corporate employment. They are subsidizing the corporations at the cost of the taxpayer. Now this causes another problem. States do not have the advantage that the federal government has because basically, in, in short, simplified terms, the federal government can create money. They can create debt through bonds, which the states can issue bonds but they cannot create money. They cannot sell their debt to the Federal Reserve. They have to sell it to the federal government who might buy bonds and they might sell it to the corporations. But no matter what, the state is running up debt which will have to be paid at some point even as they are causing a reduction in consumer spending and a reduction in tax revenue enabling them to pay off that debt. Which means we are going to start seeing states defaulting on debt, which reduces their uh, credit rating, which uh, makes it less likely they will be able to issue further debt in the future as they continue down this road. Well, all right, go from there. We already have a, a crisis. We have a crisis in our infrastructure. So the Republicans are also not wanting to spend money on infrastructure at the federal level. They are cutting their tax revenue intentionally. I would like to say, I, I would like to say that the, this is just ignorance, that they cannot look further down the road, but these people have entire teams of financial advisors which are telling them that this that I'm telling you is going to be the end result. They know that and this takes this from the realm of uninformed um, unintentional politically driven ignorance into the realm of intentional malevolence. This is nothing short of evil. So you cut tax revenue, where is the first place? Republicans and their uh, deficit spending or debt uh, concern, where are they going to make cuts first and foremost to try and uh, a level, allegedly level off this debt that they're uh, racking up, well, the first thing they're going to do is cut funding for social support programs. So they are cutting 
Unemployment, a social support program, and running up debt so that in their next step will be to cut social support programs. They're cutting federal benefits so that they can cut state programs. And all of this keeps on leading further and further down the road to less consumer spending, less tax revenue. Once you cut tax revenue, what do you do further? After you reduce social support programs, well, then you're going to cut spending on what? Infrastructure, education, etc. Anything that helps the public is going to be cut further and further and further. And that means the states will end contracts, they will uh, which support state local businesses, which means more layoffs, less spending on infrastructure, which benefits the public. They lay off teachers, they close libraries, they reduce spending, of course, on elections, they close polling places. All of this is on purpose. And this is a race to the bottom. They are literally taking the United States and turning it into a third world country more than it already is. All right, so, you know, all of this makes us sound like this is only going to affect uh, the people at the bottom of the income spectrum. But this is not true. Uh, this is going to affect people at every level of the income spectrum. You know, some people that have been, uh, you know, getting the unemployment, well, they still have assets such as stocks and so forth. And yeah, okay, so you take away that income, well, they're going to have to make it up somehow, which means what? They're going to start selling off stocks. At first, this is not going to be, uh, you know, significant uh, and highly visible phenomenon, but it is going to have an effect, enough that we will see it on the stock, on the stock market. You know, of course, this keeps on going up the chain, though. Uh, you know, the, uh, you reduce consumer spending. Well, now you're affecting what? Franchise owners as well and small businesses. Well, those people own assets as well. They say mm, it's going to be a, a, on a continuum. It's going to be a continuing effect where these people because they are seeing less and less income themselves, are going to start selling off their more liquid assets, such as stocks. But eventually, you know, when they get pushed into a corner, they're going to start selling off their hard assets, such as closing businesses, selling off properties, including residential properties, and, and so forth. So, this is going to continue having an effect as these things just go up and up the chain. And when the people that are less affected directly by income, etc., see their stocks dropping, well, they've seen gains which they don't want to lose. They want, they're going to want the liquid assets before the stocks drop. They're going to start selling off those assets as well. Sooner or later, 
at some point, this is going to affect the stock market going further and further up the chain there. If companies are not making profits and paying out dividends, then why are you going to hold the stock? You want to see the gain that you've gotten from the stock going higher. You invest in these things so that you make a profit, either by dividends or by selling off the stock. So if you're not making a dividend, which is going to drop because of lower consumer spending, which will be delayed for a while by laying people off to cut expenses, but sooner or later, this cycle can only go so far. So they, so they will no longer be paying out dividends and people start selling off the stocks. Now, of course, I pointed out before the purchase and sale of stocks does not generate any tax revenue. So what are people going to do with this money? If they're not using it to live on, then if they have enough beyond what they need to live on, well, then they're going to turn to other investment vehicles such as precious metals. Um, probably not uh, some, but not as much into cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies do not offer a tax shelter, but if you buy into, um, you know, silver, gold futures, you know, precious metals futures, that is still a tax haven. If you're invested in this, then you don't have to pay taxes on that. And even if you do, it's I. Hey, from the sale of these assets, you pay the, uh, what the heck do you call it, uh, capital gains, which is taxed at a much lower rate than wages are, are, pay, are paid at. So, but as long as you keep that money going into investments, and take out only a small amount, you're only paying 20% on what your gains are. So we're going to see more. The money is not going to come flooding back into the market and being spent. Consumer spending is going to continue declining from the bottom of the chain and on up the chain as people at higher and higher incomes see less and less profit and sell off assets. So this is a race to the bottom. You're going to see mass store closures eventually more and when it reaches the top of the chain. We've already been seeing uh, more in the last two to three years, more uh, corporate bankruptcies than at any time and closures uh, than at any time in history. And as the stock drops, you got no, you've got a company that's making no profit, their stock value declines, then they are going to wind up declaring bankruptcy. What happens from there? They have to close more locations, sell off more assets, and, uh, you know, and lay off more and more people. This is going to be the effect of this, with nearly half of the country taking part in these actions. We are going to see this happening. All right, so get ready for what's coming. Uh, couple this with the problems with the supply chain, um, you know, the food supply chain, everything is being affected by this. And that's before you even get into the steps that China has taken, which is uh, an effect uh, subject for another video, because uh, I've got this one has gotten much longer than I intended it to be. All right, so share this video. Talk about these subjects. If you can, please donate a dollar a month to help expand the channel. I'll catch you in the next one.